Okay, so I think I'm live. Yeah. Welcome to Orology Biology. Uh, this is a complete first for me. Um, something that I've not done before, so it's going to be interesting how this goes. Um, complete test. Uh, like I said, I purchased some new equipment. So my main reason in regards to doing it was to actually just speed up my editing process in regards to the restoration videos because I want to do a lot more of those but I'm not gonna lie they take up such a large amount of time with uh, the editing I mean sometimes it can take a whole day and I can have like three hours of footage which I'm pretty sure people don't want to see and I'd like to condense that down to around 50 minutes an hour um, it seems like a decent amount that people will watch and when I look at the analytics uh, a lot of people do write out most of that so three hours I think would just be ridiculous so I thought let me test it as a live stream see how it goes because obviously this equipment's new to me so I would super appreciate it obviously if there's anybody watching out there So guys, let me know if you can hear me. Uh, I just changed all the encoding settings on this. I think I had it up a little bit too high. So my drop rate was too high. So I've changed the uh, bit rate and the frames per second. So I think, I think it's okay. So you guys let me know if you can hear me okay and if everything's looking smooth, that would be super appreciated. Yay. It's really annoying that I can't get to actually talk to someone and say, yeah, everything's good. I have it, I see it on my computer and uh, the only problem is, is that I think it's a standard on YouTube as well, is that there's like a 30 second delay and you can't change that. So I'm 30 seconds ahead of you basically. Uh, oh, cool. Okay. So everyone's saying it's all clear. Okay. So. I'm super getting used to this YOLO live box as well that I got. I'm going to actually uh, do a review on this box as well, especially in regards to using it for restoration videos because it's a game changer as long as you set your bit rate up and don't go taking the piss like I just did with like 50 FPS and like 5000 bit rate, which I think probably was a bit too much, even though there were warnings coming up telling me. Okay, so I think everything's good. So let me just sort out one little quick thing. I want to change that and I want to change that. And I want to change this. Scale that down. Okay, right. I think we're good. Nice. Okay, so back on this little Sherpa. So you probably lost it, but I was talking about the importance of uh, radium and tritium and these kind of things and how it's something that you really shouldn't mess around with. So I really do take extra special care with that, uh, especially when handling it. Tritium is definitely not as bad because the shelf life on it is so much less than radium. I think radium is like 1800 years or something, whereas tritium is around 20 years. So considering that these watches predominantly are from the 1960s, um, yeah, it, quite a while ago. So it's not really a big issue. So uh, yeah, this watch is super nice. Now the person I got this from, they weren't too happy if I understood it correctly regarding the crystal but uh, 
I'm, I think the crystal's actually quite nice. Like, it's it's a high dome one, but I think it actually suits the watch. I'm not sure if you guys can see it like there, but uh, it is quite high. I mean, I can change it, it's no problem, but personally speaking, I actually think it's... I think it looks pretty nice, very seriously. So, let's crack it open. So, I always use a ball pretty much with the Anikers um, because it's easier and you're not going to scratch anything in regards to it and uh, it's better than using um, like a, a wrench because if it slips you're going to scratch that case back and that's going to suck so you really really don't want that let me just adjust that that's cool so inside and it's not that often that you see them in a goldy kind of plate color so this is an AR 1010 hand wind movement it's not running so obviously we need to find out exactly why it's not running and yeah I mean this is the first time I've opened it and overall look on it yeah I mean it, it's not like insanely bad but it isn't running obviously so we need to find out why it's not running and before I get into that, I want to just do one quick thing. I'm actually surprised how many comments there are. That means there's quite a few people here, which is freaking me out. Um, video sources, two, I'm just setting up this thing, there's a mode where I can switch between cameras automatically uh, and it saves me a job so you guys can actually see it from different angles and everything which is cool. So it nips between the other cameras quite quickly and then it stays for around 25 seconds on the main overhead camera. Okay so the balance looks free which is a good sign, hard to tell at this stage if the staff's gone or not. I don't think it has actually because I'm not really feeling a lot of resistance. So yeah, that's pretty good. Okay, so first thing that I will do is I will obviously just take this out of the movement. So this is dated on the back here. We have got March 1958. Here's another thing as well that maybe not everybody knows as well in regards to Enica. People think that it's as easy as like with Omega and it's not. So we could say here, oh, this watch is from March 1958. It's not. The case is but it doesn't necessarily mean that the watch is exactly from 1958 in fact I personally don't know what the exact date is of this watch yeah it's around that time I would say like late 50s early 60s but it's definitely not 100% this is from March 1958 and we see this in a lot of Enikers that they have the same uh, dates in the back of the case back so yeah it's not normal that they would all be from this period you know what I mean if that if that makes sense okay so this movement actually doesn't look too bad so I can pull out this crown put it aside with the stem and it's nice to see that there's not a massive amount of rust on that there's a little bit towards the top of the crown but there's not an obscene amount which is really really cool I'm also really happy to see that I'm getting 0% drop rates on this video now as well whereas before it suddenly went 100 as I was waffling on so uh, that's also a good thing to see so you got two movement case holders two movement holder screws sorry one on each side sometimes they're in different places but they're predominantly always opposite from each other as you guys probably know anyway and that's just keeping the uh, <clears throat> excuse me the movement in place so also another thing is try and make sure as well that you can use a screwdriver that's the same size as the screw or at least as close as possible and the main reason for that is is that a you don't want to scratch it unnecessarily and secondly you don't want it to slip because it could slip and then you're going to scratch the movement and as you know in my other videos I bitch off a lot about that scratched movements it's not cool and I see it a lot, I don't, you know, actually I'm going to say this now, seeing as, seeing as people are here, there's two things that I don't understand that I see on some of these other certain uh, watch restoration videos. The one thing is, I don't understand why people don't use brass tweezers all the time, because this is something I was always told. Uh, it minimizes the scratching, brass on brass, because they're both 
soft metals, you know, rather than using steel tweezers. And the other thing as well, which I don't understand, is uh, why certain people in, in uh, watch restoration videos, they finger cut up their in, in, entire hands. I don't get this. Like, every single finger and thumb is completely finger cutted. Me, I was always told three is enough, man. I mean, I'm just making sure that it's this hand that's touching it with these three fingers. And my other hand, why do I need to have finger cuts on the hand that I'm holding um, the tweezers for? It doesn't make any sense. It makes no sense to me. <clears throat> so, yeah. Okay. <laughs> uh, well, I'd, I would hardly say that this is George Lucas production value. <laughs> No, man, I would hardly say that. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> anyway, uh, yeah, let's get this out because I'm waffling on. But I suppose this is what happens in a live stream, especially when I watch, um, what's his name, uh, Carl Slav. I really like Carl Slav. Uh, he's also a watchmaker from the Netherlands. He does the Chrono Glide channel. Uh, I've watched his channel for a long time and uh, it makes me laugh as well how he does Waffle on, but now I completely get it because it's a live stream and it's obviously you can't just sit there and not say anything Otherwise people are gonna think like What are you doing? But at the same time, it's also a little bit weird because I am technically talking to myself So that's also a little bit a uh, little bit strange. So yeah So in this movement, we have got like a really thin movement holder. I'm just working out of the back It looks similar to the ones that I've worked on. So hopefully if I just pop it on this cushion it should just uh, drop out of the back which it has super nice super fresh super nice and I like this crystal so it's gonna be a case of this if this person really doesn't want this crystal I'm gonna ask if I can have it <laughs> because I like it and it's in good condition okay so here we have this movement and that dial uh, let me see if I can zoom in a little bit on this for you guys I like this equipment that I got it's super nice let me just focus in a little bit on that and zoom in a little bit more. You see, when you're doing this not in a real environment, all of this you guys don't see because obviously I will just do it myself separately. But you can see a lot of like burn um, from the uh, tritium. So you know what we'll do as well? Let's do this actually while it's on camera. Uh, let's see if it is actually producing any um, radiation still. So I have a Geiger counter here. So let me just turn this on. And then I will uh, flip over to this camera. And then uh, let's see, see what this is uh, saying, if we get anything from this. And I hope it's not going to go insane. I really hope it's not. Because then I'm going to feel all disgusting and not good. So let me turn it this way so you guys can see it. It will produce some, but I just obviously don't want it to produce insane levels. So I mean, this kind of level is just like background level anyway, so it's not particularly high. So we're climbing up a little bit. But yeah, I mean, when I've tested uh, dials with radium, man, that thing shoots up. Like, I mean, we're even going back down now. So yeah, we're good to go. It certainly doesn't mean that you should lick it or uh, sprinkle it on your, on your toast or anything like that. Hell no. So you should still be careful and treat it with respect, so to speak. So yeah. Okay, so the next thing that I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna go and uh, I'm gonna just pop in this crown. Um, the winding stem sorry i'm just going to pop it back in and the reason i want to do this is because i want to get these hands off because like i said they are tritium and i want to just put them away and also because they're delicate so i want to keep them safe you know that screwdriver is a little bit too small so i want to keep them safe as well i don't want to uh what you call it uh have them get damaged so I'm just going to line these up as close as I can to this. Usually I just do it to 12, but because the watch isn't running, I'm going to do it as close as I can to the seconds hand. And then we can just pop that movement down. I'll just pop it down there, get in focus. And there we go. Let's put this back on. And... 
<clears throat> when you're doing this kind of thing, So when you're taking off hands, as you've probably seen in my other videos as well, it's super important that you uh, use a piece of plastic. You can actually get proper uh, dial covers from Bergeon, but personally I, I actually just prefer to put a nice thick piece of plastic over because A, it's transparent and I can actually still see the watch underneath. And secondly, it covers the entire dial and I find, I've used those ones before and if anything, I personally, I just find them a little bit fiddly because they have like a slit in the middle and you have to kind of push that in through and I, um, I uh, what you call it, I prefer to use a whole piece on top instead. Mayo, yeah, mayo to the rescue. We could do that, we could just douse it in some Hellman's. I mean, you guys know I keep it real with the Hellman's so we, we, could, we could certainly, certainly do that. We really could. So when you're doing this, just do it carefully, obviously, because you're talking about quite a long pivot and you don't want to mess around. You want to do it gently. So you kind of feel it underneath the dial and then you just gently just lifting it off. Another thing as well, what I was told, uh, so these um, hand levers, I was told this as well, whenever you buy some and they're sharp on the end, I was told sharpen them even more so that's what I did I basically just grinded them to make them you won't see it obviously on camera but I made them even sharper because you want to make them as thin as possible so that you're obviously you can get in between without causing any kind of damage and unnecessary like uh, yeah unnecessary damage to the hands basically you don't want that so yeah what's everybody saying the waffling is the best part by the way <laughs> Thanks, man. <laughs> Appreciate it. New comments. Yes, I have the WD-40 Game Joy. Game Joy, by the way, I don't know if you realize, but you won that Enica sticker. Uh, I can't remember if you got in touch with me regarding that, because I'm going to need your address information of where I need to uh, send that. Because, uh, yeah, I don't know where to send it. So let me know. Another thing when taking off the hands, Use plastic tweezers guys, don't use the brass ones again, I know I go on about the brass things like they're the best things since sliced bread, but just use plastic ones because you're talking about a guy's dial, you know, and you just don't want to mash that up. It's not sexy and it's not fresh, no sir, you don't want to do that. You do not want to do that. So, let's take off these hands, now we'll give them a good inspection later on, but they seem okay. One thing I did do as well is like before I was, when I was, uh, before I took the hands off and I was just checking how it felt when you move in the hands and uh, it felt pretty good. I didn't uh, feel any like solid resistance or anything which is a nice sign. So that's, uh, that's obviously a good sign. Okay, so hands are off, nice and easy, no stress. And now what I'm going to basically do is, uh, what shall I do? I will take off the um, winding stem. But first I need a movement holder. So I'm going to have to steal one from one of these other watches that I've got sitting here. Ooh, guys, look at this one. Super nice. Let me see if you can get this. Yes. That's very nice. But I need the movement holder because I've run out. So let's pop that to one side. And I'm just going to take out the... By the way, I have the worst camera in the world in regards to autofocus, I'm sure of it. I have two of those Panasonic Lumix G7s, which I was told were pretty good. And they are, they're not bad, but I find the autofocus is really, really not uh, amazing in regards to it, unfortunately. So I'm just removing the um, just removing the movement holder. And just flip it this way. Just to, trying to be careful with that pinion on the other side. I don't want to damage it. There we go. 
put that to one side as well and get the movement <clears throat> so you've heard this before as well I'm sure it will have two dial feet oh wait what's he saying let me see that no way okay I will DM you didn't even anything yeah that's because you didn't watch my last video man if you'd watched my last video you would have known that you'd have won this but you didn't watch the last video so therefore you didn't know so now I'm even having to tell you and you didn't even know that's not fresh let me put my switch back on. Okay, so you've got two dial screws, one on each side. A lot of the time you find that these are missing as well, which suck. But uh, thankfully, uh, I can see one. And I can see the other one as well. So there are two dial screws here, which is really, really good because you want to see these. Okay, I think we are back. Okay, I was talking about this thing as if it's the best thing since sliced bread, and now I'm like super annoyed that it's uh, not all, it's causing me a lot of problems. And I don't understand why it was saying that I had a dropout then because I had zero dropout, so I don't understand uh, what the problem was. And the other annoying thing as well, what I've noticed now as well, is that when I uh, um, have to go back, I lose my settings, like the one that I've just put up now, so like the video settings, etc, etc. Okay, so it appears to be working, which is super good, but apologies guys, but like I said, my first time. It's not fresh, <laughs> but it is what it is. Oh, this watch is going to take forever to strip down, eh? For absolute ever. Okay, I'll do it quick. Alright, so I'm going to remove the uh, balance off of this. And get that out of the way. And the hairspring looks okay just from first glance. And it's really difficult because I've got one eye on this screen. And I've got one eye on the watch. And I should really have all my eyes on the watch. I need an assistant. That's what I need. I need an assistant. If I had an assistant, then they could basically just be watching my screen, which would be fresh. Oh, thanks guys. Look at this. Look at this super niceness. Oh. Oh, I like that I can just bang these comments on with a touch of a button, that's pretty cool, and then they go away after a few seconds. Okay, so just removing the uh, balance cock, which I hope you guys can see. Now, I take extra care with this, because I've mentioned it before, I hate hairspring work. I absolutely hate it. I'm not the best at it, I'm not going to lie at all. I can do it, I understand the principles of it, but I thoroughly do not enjoy it in the slightest. It's horrible. I absolutely hate it. So that's the balance off and I'm going to basically just put it to one side here. Flip it over because I wanted to uh, not have any stress. And another thing what I can do now is, but I'm not going to do it on this. But it actually, uh, it actually looks, uh, it actually looks okay. But I have, I've uh, finally figured out a way with this new device that I can connect my um, USB microscope as well, which is pretty cool. So when I tried to wind this watch, it wouldn't wind because I believe it's got like a full wind. So it's going to be interesting now to see if when I test the pallets, if they do move backwards and forwards which is obviously going to show us that there is movement and there is uh, tension in the train. So I just want to test that to see if there is actually anything in here. No, we're getting resistance. It's, it does want to, it goes, oh there you go. But it's really sluggish. 
and so far I'm actually happy about that because it's probably just filled with gunk and dry oil because it is wound so yeah it'll be interesting to uh, to find out what's going on in there so foolishly I actually thinking about it I actually took out the uh, winding stem when I need to put it back in because another thing that's so important is that you um, release the tension from the mainspring because if I was to remove those pallets just now shit would go flying everywhere and then uh, that's also not fresh because you can damage things and at the same time you're probably going to lose stuff as well which uh, immensely sucks so it's connected correctly so simply and that's the other thing as well I always do it with my free hand here because I found that if I do it on this side with the finger cuts on I won't be able to grip it correctly and it'll just slip through my fingers and just fly everywhere so that's not fresh so I want to basically do it the other way so I'm right handed so also this feels a little bit always a little bit weird and I want to basically just uh, pull back the click a little bit so it's gonna it's not gonna be as easy as other times because it's got a full wind in it so I need to try and force it a little bit just so that I can get this click out of the way There we go. Yeah, there we go. Okay, yeah, there's a lot of uh, a lot of tension in this. Yeah, I see a lot of tension. I can feel it. There we go. Yeah. And it's out, so that's good. Cool. Okay, so now I can continue to uh, break this down. Let me get a movement tray as well. So these parts uh, trays are really cool. You know you can buy these from Bergeon for like 40 euros or something, which I think is absolutely scandalous because at the end of the day it's just a simple plastic dish with nothing special about it whatsoever and you can pick them up for like five bucks. So I go for the cheap ones because, yeah, I'm all about quality, but when it comes to this kind of thing, no man, I'm not going to spend 40 bucks on a little plastic mass-produced dish. That's uh, absolutely insane. Yeah, absolutely insane. That's not cool. Will you post this video later? I have a 1010 on my hobbyist's bench. Yeah, I will do. Uh, as far as I know, it will just stay up afterwards. Uh, what I might do though, is just download that and then give it a quick edit to edit out all of the cutouts and all of the crap. And then, um, uh, what you call it, um, re-upload it. <laughs> I use an ice cube tray. Man, you are super cheap, even more than me. <laughs> no offense. An ice cube tray. That's actually not a bad idea though, thinking about it. Yeah, I'm assuming you empty the water in the ice prior though. <clears throat> okay, so I'm gonna remove the pallets. Just thinking about this video as well is, and I'm not sure if it's a glitch on the system, but what I found was both times that it cut out on me and I had the problems was when I had it on the auto switch mode. And to be honest, that's really the main reason that I bought this shit was because of the auto switch. I wanted auto switch uh, so that I don't have to keep pressing it. And you can set up timing and all kinds of things like that in regards to like how fast you want it to um, switch and which is your main camera, etc, etc, these kind of things. So that's cool. Uh, but that was the main reason, one of the main reasons anyway, why I bought this. So, uh, yeah. So... This pallet cock I will take off and I think already the problem might be to do with this because I saw a little bit of movement from the train just then and I can also see that the um, let's jump back in its hole that the pallets are stuck in the cock so to me that also might make me think that the person who serviced this originally might have oiled the uh, pallet cock jewel 
which is something that you're not supposed to do because it can potentially add friction and of course as it dries it's going to gunk up and these kind of things so we can actually check this out so that's going to be uh, interesting so let me switch now i've also never done this before so i don't know exactly now how it's going to look so you're going to have to bear with me on this one so i'm going to switch over to the usb um, magnifier and I'm watching this through the screen so you, you are really gonna have to bear with me while I get in focus with this no, no, no. there's the tweezers where are you oh there it is yeah it's not the best quality it looks like a bit of oil I mean, I'll check it properly myself with my own eye because this, the quality of the image is not amazing. But what do you guys think? I think uh, I think maybe there is a little bit of oil there. But let's also uh, check out the palettes as well, so we can check these out. Again, I'm going to have to check these myself afterwards because uh, this. I want to buy a new microphone, uh, sorry, a new uh, magnifier, by the way, and I've seen a few. There's another guy that I follow, super nice guy called Dayton. He has a, uh, a channel called I Shoot Watches. Uh, he's a super nice guy. He does crazy, crazy restoration stuff. He's like really new to it, so he kind of does it from the angle of like what you shouldn't do. Uh, and I find that highly amusing. But uh, he bought a new microscope. I can't remember the, na the name of it. But, um, yeah, that's dirty. Very dirty. Ugh, filthy. Disgusting. I will obviously check this out further myself. Uh, but anyway, yeah, he bought this microscope. It was a few hundred bucks, but it has like a 4K camera on top of it as well. And um, what I like about it is, is that you can look through it at the same time. My microscope, you can't do that. Uh, you either look through it or what you do is you take one of the eyes out. And then basically you can pop in the um, the camera, so to speak, into the into the hole. So then I'm kind of limited. I can only use one eye on it. And the other thing which sucks about it, which I've noticed is, if I focus it in for what I can see, the camera will not uh, see it the same. It won't be in focus, basically. You can't have it focused. They won't both be focused, which sucks. So, yeah, I'm not happy about that. So the one he's got, I'm really tempted to get that, but it's a lot of money and I have to chew it over. Uh, whether I'm gonna do it or not. So uh, yeah, there it is. Yeah, the Amscope with the yeah. This is an a a Amscope as well, but it's obviously a cheap one. Uh, yeah, with the Barlow lens. That's that's what he's got. But it's not. I think it's a different make of Amscope. But what he told me is over in China, they're all the same, but they slap just different manufacturers' makes on them, and you can save a few like a few bucks if you get it. I think it's like an Ekans or something. I cannot remember the exact name. Anyhow. Let's uh, let's continue with this. Right. So uh, I'm gonna take off this ratchet wheel now. Oh no, no, I'm not, no, I'm not. And I always preach about this as well. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna flip it over, and I'm gonna take off the cannon pinion. Man, what is that weird thing? It looks like mold. You guys, can you guys see this? This. Looks like a creature. <laughs> Let's see if I can zoom in on that. That's the furthest I can go. Don't know if you guys can. Uh, I don't know what that is, man. Ugh. It's hard. Like glue or something. And I hope that's not like tritium powder or something. Let me actually just clean that off, whatever it is. But it actually feels a bit hard. I'm going to clean that off. Before I take off this cannon pinion, I don't know what the hell that is. I think it's some kind of glue. What the fuck? So now I see it again, but it is, it's like. I don't know what that is. I don't think it's part of the movement. I, th I think it is like a dab of glue or something maybe they used a bit of glue glue man you know what i was talking about with glue i hate glue um 
Yeah, I'm not sure what that is, but it's something that'll probably come off in the wash. How are you guys holding up with the uh, heat anyway? Because man, it is super hot here. It's not normal, man. I have a little fan on next to me, like the cheapest USB super lame old fan that you can get. It's not good, but um, man, it's super hot, seriously. Seriously, I'm not gonna lie. If this wasn't live, I would just probably be standing there nude. But for regulations and maybe there's some kids watching and stuff, and better to be safe. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what that is, but it's come off now. Yeah. It's some kind of glue. Weird. Maybe they uh, used it on the dial a little bit more. I'm not too sure. Okay, so moving on, I'm just going to take off this dial washer, put that in the tray and also take off the hour wheel. I'm looking at it and I, I inspect everything under the microscope as well. But when I'm looking at it from here under this, I'm using like a magnifier here that I'm looking through. It's about times five. And I like to use this for just like breaking down watches because there's not anything in my face. I can just look through it. It gives me a nice clear overview. Uh, it just makes life easy. Chilly here in the States. Unlucky, Walter. Man, but, well, actually, I'm saying lucky. It's like 31 here. I'm dying. Yeah, use your ice tray, Francis. Share the love, man. Yeah. When I'm looking at it through this magnifier, it looks okay, but obviously I will inspect it further later on. And then now I can take off the... Uh, Canon pinion for that. So I use a Presto tool similar to the one for the hands. To be honest, for the hands, I predominantly use hand levers. But uh, for a uh, for a Canon pinion like this, I'll just use a, a Presto tool. You can get like a Canon pinion, a Canon pinion remover, but uh, they're mad expensive for what they are. And I think as long as you are careful in regards to it with a pair of uh, Prestos, it will use it in regards to the same principle. And that came off nice and easy, but not too easy. It didn't just fall off like I could have pulled it, like I could have swanned it and it would have cried and run away. No, sir, it wasn't like that. Came off nice, but not too firm, but not too soft, if you know what I mean. So that's cool. I am seeing all the teeth, which is good. Like I said, I will inspect these much further to check for wear, obviously. Because obviously what I can see under this magnification is not as good as what I would look underneath a proper microscope. So it's important that you do that because what you see with just a small uh, magnifier is not going to show up on a great, uh, great... Oh look, you see the train just run there? So I'm wondering if the problem was... I'm not going to do it, but I was thinking, oh man, like just stick the pallets back in <laughs> and then uh, put the balance in and see if it just works. But there was movement there. So another thing what you can do is if you use like a, a decent sized screwdriver on the ratchet wheel and just give it a little turn just to see that if they finish free and it stops, now it's stopping again. So there is, there is something going on within the train. Um, something is basically blocking it up. Could be a damaged pivot or it could be a gunk. See it's free again. I think it's gunk. I don't know what you guys think, but I think it's gunk. Francis says, we will all be moaning about the cold wind and rain in a few months time. Yes, sir, I will. I will be one of those people that will be super bitching off when I'm super cold. Totally forgetting these times while I've been sweating it out. That's the problem with people who are never satisfied, especially when it comes to the weather. When it's too hot, I complain. And uh, when it's uh, too cold, I also complain. So, cannot win. So I'm just gonna take off this ratchet wheel. It's come off nice and easy. And it looks very dry. I think that's the, I think that probably is the biggest problem with this watch is that it's very uh, dry and gunked up. Yeah, exactly, Francis, gunked up. I said it just as I read it. 
So let's remove the click and uh, the click spring. And for this, you can see the click spring here, it goes in this side. So you want to make sure that uh, you lock that down, man, because it would be super embarrassing. And I know you guys all want that to happen, that I lose a spring live. It's not going to happen. Not going to happen. No, man. You, you have no idea the amount of tension that I'm putting down on this spring right now. Super tension. No pressure. Uh, it's quite a long screw for the click. Another tip as well, if you find that parts are a little bit hard to get out, or if you're struggling with your tweezers, just use some Rodico and boom, straight away you, it will just grip it and just pull it out, which is super easy. So the spring, I just want to release the tension there and then I have it. You see, I have it. I have it. It didn't fly. It didn't fly. <laughs> there you go. <clears throat> And then over onto the crown wheel, this will be reverse threaded. And it's really mean of them as well because they've not marked the, um, uh, what you call it, uh, the threads. Usually on a reverse threaded uh, screw, uh, it'll have like two or three lines on it to really show all the special people out there. You see, that's the other thing as well. Let, let me touch on this now, yeah. Let's, a uh, little break. You know what I don't understand, yeah? why you can even have a reverse threaded screw which is clearly marked with three lines on it and everything yeah and it's been snapped off by someone it's not normal man i mean surely when that person looked at that screw and thought damn this is a weird looking screw because before i'll tell you something before i got into watchmaking i've not seen reverse threaded screws before why would i have seen that kind of thing it's not normal but when you see that surely something in your brain turns around and goes hey, hey this is not a normal screw. I need to assess this situation. <laughs> you know what I mean? Not just, oh, let's go clockwise. You know? But yeah, man, like obviously it happens still. But uh, anyway, so with this one, I could understand that I would let someone off and be like, oh, okay, you know. Um, yeah, but uh, I, 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 don't, I, don't, I don't get it, man. I don't get it. So, like I said, it's it's gonna be, you know, after all this speech that I've just said, wouldn't it be funny if it's not a reverse threaded screw? It has to be though, otherwise it would unwind itself. So there you go, I am unscrewing this the opposite way to normal. And so far, everything's coming off really nice. Oh, that was weird. Usually that never happens. The little washers come off around the screw which is fine, it's not a problem, but uh, it's something that you don't, that I've not seen before. It must be really dry, because usually it sticks in a little bit. So you have a little washer that lives here, because obviously without the washer you can see that this crown wheel moves around a hell of a lot, and uh, you don't want that. Oh man, I'm so sweaty. It's not normal. Let me just put this out of the way. Ugh. Exactly. It's exactly what this guy says. Funny looking screw. Let's just force it. You know what I mean? It doesn't make any sense, man. Damn. So, okay, so we removed the uh, crown wheel and as you can see, I can see it, so you guys probably can see it as well. You have like a little bit of wear here. So the question is whether that's um, just gunk or is it actually going to be damage onto the... Uh, No, it's just it's just dried oil. It's not. It's it's that's all. That's cool. No issues. And another thing as well, what you want to do. This is here. You want to test. Let me just move this a little bit out of the way. You want to test if there's a lot of play between the arbor and the barrel bridge 
and what we can see is so I suppose this is a good thing and this definitely affects the timing of the watch I don't know if you guys can make this out but there is a lot of play look how much play is there moving around do you see that this thing wants to leave so because there's so much play this whole barrel underneath can move see look you see, you see how springy it is look at that it's, 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 it shouldn't be like that it should be firm but not obviously like it shouldn't be too tight you know it should have it should be able to breathe and move around but it definitely shouldn't have this much play. So this is something that needs to be addressed. And I'm going to steal the line from uh, Carl Slap, where he says, uh, hammer time. And that's where you use a staking set and you basically want to make that hole a bit smaller. So by moving the material. Um, but yeah, that's a lot of play. Man, that's an obscene amount of play. Okay, but it's not an issue, so uh, it, it's okay. I'll inspect it obviously under the microscope and see. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If I start humming and stuff, yeah, you have to guys, you guys have to tell me this as well because I do this, I do this a lot. So let's pop out these two screws for the barrel bridge. Pop those aside. Wash those later and then we can flip this up. Now you will get two nice little indexes usually on movements where you can put in a screwdriver, like just a little raised area so that you're not, I mean, the reverse threaded screw guy obviously would not do this. He would just go at it with a crowbar and just, ah, you know, <laughs> I will put it anywhere. Uh, but they actually make little areas for you to put your screwdriver in properly. And uh, it's the normal way, the legit way. So I'm just popping it in and it comes off super easy. And the reason it comes off super easy is because of the obscene amount of play. I'm wondering if it's even gonna be round still, which might be a problem, but uh, I'll have to check that. And underneath, let's see if my autofocus works. No, of course it doesn't. So I'll have to do this manually. Oh, there we go. Uh, doesn't look too bad. I don't know if you guys can see, I mean, it's not like filled with like obscene amounts of grime and, well, not man cheese, but you know what I mean. It actually looks, yeah, it looks not too bad, man. Okay, cool. Next. Yeah. Okay, so I will continue now. I'm going to take off the train. Oh, man, you know what I've seen? Oh, I hate those. I really hate those. They're just annoying. On top of the um, movement, so for the jewels, for the escape wheel, on oh, the other one as well, they both have got little, um, like, um, what's the name for them? Remind me the name. Someone remind me the name. Not It's not the Inca blocks, but it, they look a little similar to the, like, Fick, Fick, something like that, I think they're called Fick or something. Um, anyway, they've got them covering, they've got like little capsules basically, so you have to remove these in order to oil them. Super annoying. Extra work. <clears throat> but this is a nice, uh, a nice movement to, uh, to look at. And uh, yeah, I mean, so far, as you guys can see, it doesn't look like particularly like destroyed or anything. It's not heavily scratched up. It's not, it's just very dry, obviously. Little awkward doing this on camera, by the way, guys, because I'm not like directly over this. So I'm trying to find the screw thread from a, an angle where I'm not directly above it. And I don't want to mess it up. There we go. Obviously, and especially now, like with this, Kif, that's it. Yeah, yeah, you're right, yeah. Yeah, Kiv. Can't remember every name. I should use my cap as a uh, receptionist for the uh, comments. And you can use these like pads and just like, yeah, you got a new comment coming in. I'm actually surprised there's this many people commenting. I'm really, I'm really, 
really happy about that. Like, I, I mentally prepared that this was just going to be me talking to myself, even though I am technically, but I did mentally prepare that it would be a case of um, just treating it like a normal uh, video, because obviously it stays there afterwards. So it's super nice. I really appreciate it. Thank you, guys. So that's the train bridge. I'm going to pop this under the microscope and see if I just if we can see these uh, jewels, see if we can have a look. Not sure if it's gonna work. There's one. Yeah, you see it? Dried, gunky, skunkiness. Of course, I have no idea which one I'm looking at. Ew, what's that? That jewel doesn't look amazing. Again, this picture quality is not the best as far as I'm seeing what you're seeing. Of course, I will uh, peg wood uh, these prior to cleaning and then inspect even more. It's also something you should do after you've cleaned as well. It's like inspect all the parts as well, make sure everything's okay. So, yeah, you're saying use Rodico, yeah, but they're like, um, you still need to twist them though off. Okay, let's take off this wheel. Come here. Do not want to force it because it has such a long arm to it. I'm going to just pop these aside because I also do want to have a look at these as well under the scope. This is such a typical Eneka setup. I mean, it's for now, for me, it's like second nature with regards to uh, how they're laid out. It's um, very much used to it. Escape. Put that aside as well, and then I'll take out the barrel and put this aside. If I can get it, there you go. But as I'm sure you guys will agree, just looking at it like this, it's not like this movement is heavily uh, gunked. It's not. I, I really just think it's not been serviced. It's probably not not been serviced for decades. Um, that's usually the case. And then like a car, it would just, yeah, I mean, it would just run dead, you know. I keep checking my uh, Mac screen and everything, because I have it in the background, in a, so I can see that there's still movement. Because I don't want it to jump out again. But I have a feeling that it is to do with switching that auto switch. And it might be that I need to double check what frame rate that I have these cameras on. But like I said, for me, in regards to this live situation, it's completely, uh, it's completely new, guys. Completely new. What do you call? Dried oil. Yeah, it could be cracked. Could be, Alex. Could be. Uh, I need to look uh, further. <clears throat> Yeah, crack jewels obviously suck, especially for a person who's, who owns the watch. Let's take out this center wheel, big wheel. Put that aside. Right, I'm going to have a look at the uh, wheels. The wheels! The wheels! get a shot. I just want to see what the pivot looks like on one. If I can find the angle. Mm -hmm. Where are you? This is so awkward. Okay. Hmm. 
some corrosion, but obviously this can be dealt with. Chip it around. Let's see if it's mushroomed up or anything. Okay, I need to work out the better way to do with this scope. Ideally, I want to get that same scope that Dayton's got. Because I think that would really solve all my problems. Especially with video. But it's a test, so I get away with it. Because it's a test, and you guys have come along for the ride, and I super appreciate that. Because I didn't expect that. Didn't expect that at all. Okay... So obviously that's that side done, so I'm going to flip it over and I'm going to do the other side. But actually, before I will do that, let me just unscrew this setting lever screw and take out the winding stem, and there it goes. Did you see it jump out? The setting lever. Stem. I'll actually just take these from this side. Winding pinion, sliding pinion. Not as gunked as I expected them to be. They're really not. Again, I, I just think this is really a case of dry, really, really dry movement that's just basically been causing all of the resistance. I strongly think that once this has been checked and cleaned and rebuilt, I think it'll just fire up, I do. So flip it over and I can already see something which you don't see often and you definitely don't see it on the um, uh, AR-1010 which is quite quite cool to see. Have you seen the uh, extra jewels? Look at the completely unnecessary jewels on this um, minute wheel. It's almost like it's, it's a bit of a strange one because it's like, it's done and then it's like bumped up the amount of jewels that's in the watch, but then really, is it really necessary that these are on the minute wheel? I don't think so. Let me know what you think. Turbo, have you got that scope as well then? Is that what you're saying? And look as well, on the back side as well, each jewel has got its own little cap on top as well, which is kind of interesting. That's cool to know. The question is, are they all the same or not? That's always the risk. Are they all the same? Or because sometimes they can be different thicknesses, depending on the length of the pivot underneath. Can be too big. So I'm going to take off this little plate. And this is not going to work. I need to sharpen the screwdriver. That's another thing as well that's important, man. Get like an India stone and just uh, give your screwdrivers uh, a sharpen. Because it's important that they are sharp as well, otherwise you're just going to rip through the uh, threads of the screws unnecessarily. And you don't want that. I think that's okay. Very awkward to see from this angle. I'm having to tilt it towards me a bit to try and get in. No, I'm not. I'm not getting in. Mm. 
Yeah, unnecessary jewels. Exactly, uh, Walter. Unnecessary jewels. I think it's just done as like an appetizing uh, thing. Why am I not getting in with this screwdriver? This is my thingy. It should work. <clears throat> Oh, you did order it. Cool. What's that? What's the username? That's what you tax purposes. I've been waiting for it to arrive. Yeah, I'm. Uh, did you order it on AliExpress as well? Uh, the only thing that I found about the one with AliExpress, the price of the shipping was not normal, man. They were like asking like shitload of money for it. I was not uh, overly impressed with that. Not overly impressed at all. These are really fine screws. There we go. The thread uh, line is very thin, so I've had to really sharpen the point on this screwdriver up a hell of a lot. Which is a good thing. There we go. Yeah, getting back to what I said earlier on, uh, I do, I think the, the switching of the camera, um, I think it's got to be something to do with the frame rate. But this YOLO box, <clears throat> so I was looking to get some kind of encoder, but I wanted some, because I, I'm not like a big film guy, I mean I love movies, don't get me wrong, but I'm not like a, I don't have an obscene amount of knowledge, even though I did used to work for Adobe many years ago. Um, but I don't have an obscene amount of knowledge in regards to film uh, equipment. So I did a lot of research on YouTube, of course, and then I discovered this YOLO Box Pro. I find the name ridiculous, if I'm honest. I have a YOLO Box. <laughs> what is that, you know? But it is pretty impressive. I mean, okay, I had some teething problems, but come on, man. I mean, it's the first stream, so it makes sense that I would. It'd be a miracle if it went live, live without any hiccups. But uh, I do appreciate you guys uh, hanging around, by the way. But um, I just love the way that so much of it you can set up. You have the whole device is like a screen in itself, whereas other ones are not. So you don't need a monitor because you have a monitor because it is technically, it looks like a big tablet at the end of the day. That's what it looks like. Um, so I just need to check my settings and make sure, see what I'm doing. Okay, there's a lot of oil under here. I don't know if you guys can see this reflecting, but I'm seeing a lot of, uh, looks like wet on that plate. I prefer uh, a lot of oil than rust, obviously, because I mean, with a lot of oil, it actually keeps things pretty safe, really, when you think about it. I mean, shit's not gonna run good, but it's gonna keep things pretty safe. But yeah, completely unnecessary jewels, and yeah, it's the first time I think I've actually seen one with this. Look at that, completely unnecessary. No need. No need at all. So now I'll take out this intermediate wheel as well. And it is not beveled sometimes they're beveled on one side and this no nah, it is a little bit yeah it is a little bit beveled and then i can take out the spring that to one side use pegwood or what I do is I just it's not like insane but use a little you don't want it to fly so just use a, your, I use my finger basically I just I don't grip it I just keep it above it so in case something does go it's gonna just hit my finger because you don't want to um, you don't want it to just fly across the room so to speak 
and it has a thin arm on it as well. So you need to be careful. There we go. It is a nice wheel, Alex. I agree. It's a very nice wheel. Setting lever looks pretty good. These are getting harder to get, I'll tell you that now as well. These, uh, they are getting harder to find. Now take out the yoke and the yoke spring. Again, a little bit of pegwood, just to secure that spring. You don't want it to fly out. Try and release the tension off of this, but it's evading my tweezers. Or I can just pull the yoke off, that's the, an easy way of doing it. It's very dry, this, uh, but apart from that weird bit of oil underneath that uh, case, that uh, plate, sorry, for the uh, mini wheel. Scoop. Super nice. So with these, I'm going to have to take these out. The other ones I wasn't going to bother, but now that I see that these are capped on the other side, otherwise they're not going to get washed at all. You know what I mean? Uh, usually I do this kind of thing afterwards, after a clean, but because they're capped on both sides, yeah, it's, I, th I think it's better to, uh, I think it's better to take these off. <clears throat> <laughs> no man, it's horrible. Dropping a spring on the floor on the floor is the worst thing. It sucks so much. I really cannot stand it. It's like it's so demoralizing. It's like the spring has already won and you've, you you don't even realize it yet, you know what I mean? You've already lost. Now the, the weirdest one I ever lost it was a, uh, a capstone for the, um, it, it, I can't remember what caliber it was, but it was an Omega watch. And I, it, yeah, it was either on the balance or it was on the dial side, I can't remember which. But um, man, those things are expensive. And as you know, those capstones are like super, super tiny. But I was like, no man, I'm not giving up. I need to find this. And I was on my hands and knees and I was looking for this thing. And the worst thing is you can't use a magnet because obviously it's, it's not magnetic, man. So you're screwed. So you know what I did? I have one of those little uh, robot vacuum cleaners. So I basically emptied it out completely and then I let it do a pass over where I was. And then I emptied all of the contents onto a white piece of paper and uh, I found it. And I was most happy about that because I think it was, it was around 80, uh, 80 euros I think they were asking. So it was a super nice feeling, literally there with a magnifying glass looking at this white piece of paper and all dust and crap and, and hair and fuck knows what else. Oh, I don't even know if I can swear on this actually. I mean I know it's my channel but I just said a bad one. This screw does not want to come out. Yeah, as I've said before, I'm not trying to make excuses for myself, but my angle is very odd. I'm not over this where I'd like to be over this and I'm not over this. So it's difficult to fully see. You guys are probably seeing better than me. Yeah. <clears throat> Hoover and white paper. It works though. It is super nice. Uh, especially when you find it as well. Mm -hmm. Right. 
Right, so there they are. There are all of those little caps and the screws. So I'll pop those to one side. And I'm hoping that they are all the same. I think they will be, if I'm honest. I have, if I'm honest, now that I'm thinking about it, I have seen these things before. Not on, uh, I don't think I've seen it on an Enneker. But um, I think they are. I know with balances, um, they do differ from top and bottom. And sometimes that can be a nice giveaway when you're working on a watch and the balance is not running right. Then you, you flip over the uh, capstones because the person who did it before has put them on the wrong way around. And then, um, yeah, basically it solves your problem if that was the problem in the first place. So that movement has been completely stripped, guys. I am going to pop in... Apart from, did I take out the setting lever screw? I'm sure it's still in there. No, I must have taken him out. No, there he is. I thought I saw him. Okay. So now with this, I can put in the balance. Obviously, in a situation like this, I'm touching the movement, but it's getting washed anyway, so it's not a big deal. And then always pop on the balance back onto the movement, because it keeps it safe. Actually, I want to have a look at this first before I do this, so I'm going to put it under the microscope first and have a quick look. shot let's see also I the other thing that I find which is crappy about this camera on the uh, microscope it's really uh, zoomy so, I mean it's like it's it's too hard for you guys to even see well, there's the uh, stuff The impulse jewel, again, will be fully inspected after cleaning. There's a little bit of fluff, I think, on the end of that balance. Let's put it on the um, on the movement. And I'm doing this carefully because I don't want to drop it because it's slippy on the other side. There you go, man. A major day. Get that rumba out. Rumba. Rumba for finding springs. Can you imagine how many springs that it's going to find? Well, actually, I don't know. I mean, I'm assuming that you have fucking cleaned your place probably since then. But, uh, yeah, they work. The worst, obviously, is if it goes somewhere where the vacuum cleaner is not going to gonna go and then obviously you're not gonna be it's not gonna pick it up so that would suck okay so that's that and it's not too bad yeah a little 
little bit of play, a little bit of shake. <clears throat> so we need to remove the... Man, I can't believe it's been an hour and a half already. You know, I have to wrap this up soon, seriously. But it was a test and it was a strip down, so that's good. Let me speed up. Yeah. So that's the movement set aside. That's been done. And then the last thing, obviously, what you want to do is you want to take out the spring. And I'm suspecting that this spring is going to be super, super dry. I mean, it has to be. I mean, it's... I mean, if you look at an indication in regards to the rest of the um, movement, then... Yeah, I mean, it makes sense that this one will be uh, really, uh, really dry as well. <clears throat> so I just want to pop off this uh, barrel and I just do it on something hard, but not too hard. So I can just release it. Yeah, dark gunk. But, first impressions doesn't look super, super too bad. Let me, uh, Try something else as well because I've got another idea. Next, next. Yes, we do that. And if I do that like body thickness scale, corner down. Yeah, there we go. Cool. I'll just clean that up. Yeah, it doesn't look too bad. I mean, obviously it needs cleaning properly, but it doesn't look too bad. So then, of course, we're left with the mainspring and um, the barrel and the arbor. So you just want to take that out. You need to be careful with this because it's under masses of tension. So I just take out the arbor carefully. Sometimes it will come with a pair of tweezers, sometimes it won't. So you don't want to force it if it doesn't want to pop. Um, so then you can just gently lift it out with a screwdriver. Sometimes what I do is if it really doesn't want to come, I just actually leave it in and I will just take it later, like which is what I'm going to do now. If it comes with the spring, I actually let it just run its course. So it has, this one has come with the spring, so therefore I'm like, I'm not going to mess around trying to remove the arbor now from the spring. So what I want to do is, and again, it's a little difficult. Let me move this thing out of the way, that's better. And you want to basically just, yeah, use your thumbs and feed it in and out. Good thing is I have a lot of uh, new old stock 1010 parts if anything is needed, but I lost things, things are all right. There we go, it's out. And then I can check out the barrel. Show you guys, see what you guys think. Let me zoom in on that. It's dirty, but it's not uh, insane. I just want to give it a quick wipe. I think just because I just want to see if it is just oil or if it's actually scratches and wear. But I think it's just oil. Just clean up with some Rodico before I show you guys. It's not too bad. Is it possible to clean a main? What's he saying? Is it possible to clean a mainspring and barrel that isn't supposed to be opened? Yeah, it's funny you should say this. Um, the only one that I've ever encountered where it says it was on the Zodiac uh, Seawolf, and that's the caliber seventy slash seventy two. And it explicitly says on the barrel, "Do not open" in capital letters. And this goes back to the uh, reverse threaded screw guy. 
you know that reverse surgery screw guy <laughs> will open up that barrel that in big shiny super tight do not open but if the mainspring is broken then yeah you're gonna have to open it but I've never done it myself but I do remember once on one of the Facebook groups there was a guy on there who had opened it and he has said yeah it was an absolute nightmare trying to get it back on uh, and I don't even know if he did do it or what I don't know I mean when it comes to watches and things like that things are supposed to feel natural and things are supposed to fit you know if you're feeling like something's being forced then it's not right end off really that's what I was always told it's, it's not right um, but yeah if I see a, if I see it and it says don't open it I'm not gonna open it but then it's also a difficult thing because the other argument in regards to that is is let's say that obviously there are barrels out there where they like it says do not open as that zodiac is an, uh, is, is an example of that and then I'm assuming back in those days it's not really a big issue because they would basically just um let me switch this back while i'm ranting off they would probably just assume that the owner of the watch after like three or four years would be having it in for service and i wouldn't be surprised at all if zodiac as as an example would basically just replace that whole barrel like they'd have a whole load of those in stock and they just bam take it out throw it away or refurbish it and then they just put a new complete barrel in with spring arbor everything that's what I would assume would be the case but I've never opened one and purely because it says don't do it and I just think if it's saying don't do it it's just gonna be a nightmare man like to get it back in and I know that guy on Facebook he was super emotional about it because he couldn't get it back because he opened it so yeah but the but Walter then what are you saying are you saying that it's broken or are you, is the mainspring broken is that what it is because if it's not broken I wouldn't open it if it was me I just wouldn't I think you just my personal opinion is that yeah you're just gonna cause yourself a big headache what's that when it doesn't want to come I just leave it in <laughs> yeah yeah they curl over the barrel base over the lid yeah and then it's probably yeah I think it would be a pain in the ass says don't open it for a reason guys so that barrel I'm okay with let me get this arbor out now probably be able to just push this out the other side because I don't want to damage this spring because this spring doesn't look too bad come on come to papi Come to Papi. You can do it. You can do it. Doesn't want to bloody come now. Push. There you go. <clears throat> and this spring is dirty, but it's not insane. And let me do an overhead. Where are you? I will replace it anyway because I have a feeling that this watch is just not being serviced forever. But what do you guys think about this spring? If I change the camera, the shape of it. Like an instant replaceable spring or what? What would you say? Because I don't think it's too bad, personally. Exactly, man. I think it's I think it's best with, with that kind of thing. I think you're just gonna cause yourself like a big. Uh, I think you're gonna cause yourself like a big headache. Seriously. Glue. Glue. <laughs> man, why? It's, see, that's really turned me off now. 
they glued the crystal in. And the worst thing is, uh, wait, 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 correct me if I'm wrong, but is that crystal tension ring glued in as well? Or it, that is a crystal tension ring. That's not part of the case. What the? Man. Look at that. Let's see, see if you guys can see this. Pop that spring to one side. You guys see this? So I took, I popped off the crystal, which came off super easy, and it's been glued in. But the uh, the crystal tension ring is glued, and it's stuck fast. So I can't even, I can't, uh, I don't want to just rip it. But in an ultrasonic, it will just come loose anyway, so it's not the end of the world. So yeah. Okay, I'll deal with that later. But uh, I think that crystal is nice, man. I'm quite, uh, I'm okay with that. So, I think we're getting towards the end. And I super appreciate uh, that you guys have uh, dialed in for this. It's super nice. And then maybe other people will watch it on the, uh, the catch-up. I will leave it on. Maybe I can just remove those cut bits out. I'm not sure if YouTube allows you to do that. I will have to see. But um, I will put this one aside and then moving forward I will do it as a rebuild as well. So uh, I won't do the whole cleaning process. I will clean it and I will inspect all the parts and everything and then I will have it all ready. And then I will rebuild it and then we can rebuild it together. Uh, I think that would be nice. And it, for me, like I said, it's been a super nice learning curve. So I'm actually really appreciative that there's been some comment interaction. So that's really nice. I'm really thrilled with that. Even on this super sweaty swamp house day, which is not fresh. I just want to get naked. Um, so yeah, that's what I will do. So thanks guys. Super appreciate it. Hit a like and all of that weirdness that all those other YouTubers say and subscribe to my channel and stuff, you know. Because yeah, that's the other thing. Spread the love, man, because I want to get up to a thousand uh, subscribers. It would be nice to uh, build up the channel even more than what it's on. So guys, until further ado, and until next time, super fresh, super nice. Yeah.